Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hip Knits podcast episode 33. Hi everyone, today it's a, a relaxing Sunday for me. Uh, I'm recording from Northern Tasmania. My name is Hannah and I have been doing this podcast for a bit over a year now. It's a podcast mainly about what I have been knitting and other crafts I have been doing. I started a hand dyeing business on a very small scale at the end of last year. So I I did talk about dyeing before I started the small business, but I um, talk I still talk about it a bit and I guess I do a bit more dyeing now than I used to. And um, I do some sewing and other crafts and sometimes spinning. And uh, yes, I just like to sit down and um, share those things with you and anyone who's interested. I'd like to think of this as my little um, knitting group, really, because I don't have the opportunity to go to my local knitting group like I used to. Um, so welcome. Uh, I'll just let you know the places you can find me online. I am Rosehip Chick on Instagram and on Ravelry. So please come and uh, say hello to me in any of those places. And we have a group on Ravelry for this podcast. And you can find that just by looking for Rose Hip Knits Podcast. Um, there is a blog where I post the show notes with some of, uh, some of the links to things that I have been talking about through the episode. And that's rosehipknitspodcast.com blogspot.com is where you can find that so I normally put all that information at the start of the episode and also towards the end so if you are interested in finding any of that you should be able to quite easily so thank you everyone for joining me and thank you to all of those of you who are supporting me in any way by watching by checking me out for the first time by returning to watch new episodes, if you go and have a look at my Etsy shop, if you participating in any threads in Ravelry, if you are joining my cows, anyway, you are taking part in this um, podcast and um, joining the group and joining my, uh, I guess, virtual knitty group. So thank you, everyone. Today. As I said, it's a quiet, relaxing Sunday here, and um, it's very windy outside. It's quite overcast. It's it's really autumn here now. Um, I'm wearing my um, autumn autumn morning shawl. Oh, sorry, Holly. This is Holly Dapp that designed this uh, shawl, and I test knitted for test knitted it for her. This is uh, out of um, hand dyed and natural colour. I hand dyed it. It's a limited edition yarn from Bendigo Woolen Mills, and it's a um, wool, bamboo, and silk blend. And I have actually used this quite a lot in the last couple of weeks because it has been getting colder, but it's still quite warm and sunny during the day most days. So it's just nice to have something that's a light color, but can keep you warm. Okay, so today I have some knitting to share with you. I have been doing a bit of sewing, but I don't have anything really to show you. I have been doing quite a bit of dyeing, so I thought I'll just show you one example of what I have been doing. Just another interesting um, experiment like um, those ones that I showed you uh, last time I recorded. Oh, the sun just got very bright. <laughs> okay, that's fine. It's, it's um, going away a bit again. Today I have some apples back here because I think you saw in the last episode that we have been out um, picking uh, some apples and pears and we just have a masses of them at the moment. So I choose to um, use them as a bit of a display instead of um, flowers. <laughs> um, so yes, that's what I will talk about today. I have also this weekend attended a conference here in Northern Tasmania in Launceston. They um, had, they're still having the annual Superfine Merino conference. 
I have the I have the program here, so I'll, I'll, I'll just show you. The Australian Superfine Wool Growers Conference. Um, and I was able to go to that through work and listen to some really interesting um, talks yesterday from a wide perspective, different people that are involved in the um, wool business really, of, and Superfine Merino uh, in particular. And that was really interesting and I think I'll give you just a short recap of that at the end of the episode. Just a few little things that were messages that I took with me, I guess. So hopefully I'll have time to share some of that with you. We also have um, um, an it along drawing to do today and also the drawing for my... Um, one year anniversary um, giveaway. But since I am recording using my phone and the phone is the only device I have out here that I can access internet and access Ravelry on and do the drawing on, I'll just have to do that after I record the main part of this episode. So after I go through my knitting, I'll take a short break, do the drawing. Unfortunately, I can't do it on camera. I'll write down the winners and I'll record again and just tell you the winners. So uh, I'll do that. Okay. All right. Um, let's get into some knitting, shall we? <laughs> so I have not finished anything the last couple of weeks. I have started more things though. But I'll, I'll show you what I'm working on. I did link to, um, I told you last week, this is, oh, last episode, that this is a bag from Ganache and she now has an Etsy shop. And I did link to that in the last, um, in the show notes for the last episode. And I went to have a look and she has some great bags in her shop. So in this bag, I still have my cowl, which is a test knit. This is the crayfish, Cable and Lace Cow by Christy, his Layla Caroline Designs on Ravelry. And I'm making this out of a single ply merino dyed by a Meg of Atelier Yarn. This is the base, the pinnacle base. Um, and I'm now up to five completed repeats. I did four repeats using the chart and that was fine. I did one repeat using the written instructions and that was also perfectly fine. So I know now that I've tested the pattern and it's fine and I've told Christy that. But now my dilemma is do I continue and make it taller? I think it will stretch out quite a bit which will mean that it will not be as tall as it looks like now. So I might do another one or two repeats before doing the little bit of ribbing again and casting off. Um, but I have basically... I think I did one or two rows since I last recorded and now oh, it's just been um, sitting in the bag while I make a decision on if I should continue on it or not so or if I should keep doing more repeats or not but I am um, I really like it I love this bluish grey colour and the pattern I tried it on, it looks really great, so I think this will be a really useful um, piece for my wardrobe in winter. So yes, I am working on that, but no, well, I did work on that, I haven't really lately. And then I am still working on the socks that I had casted on last time. In my bag from Acorn, Chasing Acorns, a bag that I won um, when I participated in a die along for the Dyer's Notebook podcast a while ago now. Um, so these are the socks. I have started the actual pattern. These are the Simple Skype socks. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. This is a pattern uh, 
I think it's only men's sizes and using a sport weight yarn but I am using a fingering weight sock yarn and this is a sock yarn that Erin of Holland Handmade podcast dyed and she gave it to me in a swap that we did last year so I have done a little bit of the patterning on the leg but not a lot it's not really showing up a lot but I think once I get a little bit further you'll actually see that there is a pattern I love this blue color it's very nice and happy blue um, I have my little spinning wheel stitch marker there hopefully that will make me um, think about spinning more and get back into the spinning so that's them you see my higher high ass, higher higher sharps, which I really enjoy. I'm still doing these two at a time. I was thinking about putting them on my nine inch circulars, but I think I might eventually, not right now, but I'll cast on just plain vanilla socks and then I'll use my nine inch circulars. But they're those socks, um, have not obviously worked a lot on them because I've had um, shawl knitting that has been keeping me busy in my beautiful bag from Sandra from um, Craftfulness Podcast in Etsy shop um, I have my Moonraker shawl and I showed you this last time and I think I have worked quite a bit more on it this is what it looks like in our so I think I had this bit last time and I have continued up and this is um, my little mini that I have used because for this color here you only need oh basically a mini you don't need um, many meters of it because I think you only do two of these um, daisy chain I think daisy stitch rows using that um, color so I chose to use a mini there from Andre Sunitz. Um, yes, so that's how far I've got on that. And the sun is doing crazy things again. So my main purple colour is a... I'll show you. It's the Dale Baby Ooh, that I bought when I went to Sweden in July. And then these lighter purple bits I'm using this skein of Flock and Needle which is it's um, she's an Australian indie dyer and this is a um, MCN so Merino Cashmere Nylon skein and then I told you that one is a mini skein from Andre Sunit and the gre other green one is this skein that uh, my mum gave me and that's a it's a nettle sock yarn which is quite interesting this is from onion or oh, yes it's it's a Danish brand and it's 70% wool and 30% nettle fibers and that's um, it's quite a bit thinner I don't know if it will um, change when I wash it, but it's quite a bit, um, oh, maybe thinner is not the right word, but it's definitely not um, as um, fluffy as these, um, as the wool ones. I, I think the nettle fiber makes it more shiny and straight. <laughs> That's a bad way to describe it, but hopefully you sort of understand what I mean. So that's the right side of that. The wrong side is not looking as <laughs> pretty. You don't think about that when you see a pattern, you see a shawl or anything, and you see the pictures of them. You don't think about that. It only has one side that's the correct side, and then it's still okay on this side, but no, you don't want to wear it like this. And there's lots of um pieces to weave in so 
yes but I really enjoy this pattern and enjoy knitting it and it just makes you go 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 because it's not that far in between doing the this uh, really enjoyable daisy stitch I think they're cool yes so I've had a lot of fun with that so I did quite a bit of knitting on that but then I thought oh actually the thing was I I dyed up some more of the white gum wool in the fingering weight and I had decided to dye up a skein for me because I had one extra I had a skein that my mum had actually bought to me long before I started dyeing for the shop and um, so I wanted to do something just for me and I did and that turned out great and I thought oh this looks really nice I, I like to repeat it for the shop so I put another skein in but I had a different setup if you've watched before and you've watched sort of dyeing segment of the podcast you know that I normally steam my skeins after I dye them which really reduces any risk of felting and any issues and um, I always rinse with really like quite warm water and the wool wash and everything after and I haven't had any problems with the dye not setting but I I got a new setup with actually heating the pot on a gas stove because with the white gum wool which is not a super wash it's quite a bit trickier to get um, really colorful um, colorways or really bright colorways it's hard to get them saturated with colors I'd say and I thought it's if I can get the heat in there in a different way and more at the same time as I'm putting the dye on that might improve how the yarn is absorbing the dye so I set up on a gas stove with a pot the problem was that I got distracted and I, um, I was not paying enough attention to the pot with the water and the yarn so it started boiling like crazy which is really bad it's okay if it's a super wash it will probably go okay but this gain of um, white gum will just because with the boiling the the yarn was just sort of rubbing against itself and it got really hot and it was a disaster it was so filtered in in some areas not completely but in some areas so I just decided that okay well that skein will be the one for me if I in any way can save it and make something out of it that's just great because the colors were still really pretty and everything and then the skein that I originally made for me I put in the shop so what I with all of that was going to um, tell you or show you is that I am um, I did manage to save the wool that was quite filtered in some areas but as you might be able to see that it has a bit of a halo almost um, like it has you know, angora or mohair or any something like that in it it's still really really soft and um, I really like the colors so I put this in the bag that I made for myself and started working on a shawl and what I am doing is the Multnomah shawl which is a shawl that I made previously and I use it quite a lot so I thought that's a good option I, I think I'll definitely use another Multnomah it's just a good size and a good shape so this is how it's knitting up and to me it looks perfectly fine I mean I would never ever sell something that has been through that um, harsh dyeing and, and um, filtered and it's always like it's shrunk a bit in places so I would 
not even think about trying to sell that but it, my camera decided to die on me a bit there so I hope um, this will be okay I've took some photos off the camera or off the phone so now I should be able to record again so anyway I um, I was showing you my Mognoma and I'm very happy with it I'm very happy with this colorway that I did and I love the really nice soft um, white gum wool and I I actually met Nan Bray of white gum wool yesterday at the conference and um, it was lovely we had a quite a, a bit to talk about and it was lovely and I really enjoyed it and I was so happy that I got an opportunity to meet her um, that's all I have been working on and um, I am um, I'm still I haven't started my um, softy or the soft toy for the that um, knit along that the legacy knits podcast is doing I have been looking through some patterns in Ravelry and everything but um, haven't started anything yet but that's that's coming up but another thing that's coming up and that I'm quite excited about is a um, a, a, a project for the Foxes in Socks podcast is that the name I think so um, and I, I have been watching that podcast since they started recording uh, Beth, Beth and Kerry I'm sorry I might get that wrong anyway uh, uh, they're sisters and they're podcasting and um, I really enjoy the podcast they, they just remind me of um, me and my sister a bit anyway they have a new cow happening and it's an adventure cow and what they have done and I've never heard of a pod, uh, of a knit along like this before and I thought it was a really good idea them to come up with it's an adventure cow because you have five different um, areas of a project that you will draw options for so it's and and they will draw for you so they'll have the different um, Parts. Oh, I can't, I'm not finding my words anymore. I'm so sorry. They draw for a color, or you can choose how many things or what things for them to draw for. I asked them to draw for all five for me. So that's choosing a color, type of yarn, which is like um, a weight of yarn, and a type of dyeing method, like if it's speckled or variegated or solid, and um, what pattern. And I think there were only, like there were no big garments or anything in the different things that they could draw for. And then I think it was like a technique. So what they drew for me was colour yellow. And hello, how often do I use yellow? Not very often. And um, variegated. So yellow variegated, worsted, weight, shawl. And color work yes so that's a bit of a challenge so definitely an adventure for me to do that I have been looking through shore patterns in Ravelry different worsted weight patterns using color work and what I mainly get doing a search like that is striped shawls in worsted weight so that's what I'll, I'll, I'm planning to do and using a worsted yellow variegated yarn as one of, of the yarn options. And I wanted to use something in my stash, but of course, I don't really use yellow, so I don't have a, yellow, a lot of yellow in my stash. Also, I don't have a lot of worsted weight. It's, I think, DK and fingering weight is more common in Australia. I might be wrong, but that's what I normally find. Um, but in my stash, I found some hand spun that was worsted weight and had some yellow in it. And it's this one here. Oh, it has, this is just ties. So this is a Navajo ply 
I did, and I think it's a worth it weight, and it obviously has some yellow in it. I'm thinking this will count as a variegated. I'm not sure what else I would call it. It has longer colour rip um, color repeats. Longer stretches of colour because it's Navajo applied. Um, but I'm hoping that will be okay to use. So I'm thinking I'll use that and stripe it with this other, um, these two skeins that I found in my stash. I don't think I've even entered them into Ravelry. They were a gift. Um, they're a merino. But this colour, and you can't see now because the sun is doing crazy shining things again, but it's a sort of um, wine colour, I guess. And that colour um, is in this skein as well, of my hand spun. So I thought I'll do the striped shawl using these two, and that should cover all those five um, parts of the adventure cow. So I'm just going to post this in the thread in the Foxes in Socks podcast group and make sure that they, that is all okay. I did find a little bit of yellow in my stash, so I thought I have this skein in case I need to um, do some <laughs> magic to make um, make it all work. If I had to add, add a little bit of a border of yellow or something, I have that. So um, that's what's coming up. And that will be fun. So then I'll have three shawls on the needles, which will be just excellent. <laughs> I am um, not so worried about finishing things anymore, obviously. Maybe it's because I'm not in a cow. I haven't entered anything in a cow for a while. I used to do that quite a bit. Um, but no. And it's... I never feel like... I need to finish things for the podcast but normally I do finish things quite often anyway because I have um, niche long deadlines and I just want to finish things but um, I don't think when I watch podcasts I don't worry too much about if they finish things all the time I just like to see different projects and and see the podcast to talk about what they're doing and um, I don't mind if the projects are on the needles or not, so I, I hope that's okay with you too. I um, Mostly I have been spending time dying for a custom dye job that I was um, contacted about and I said um, that I would sort of, I'd, I'll give it a go. If the customer likes them, you know, I'm happy if she want, wants to buy them in the end. She gave me some, she sent me a lovely um, letter and some samples and things and some yummy chocolate and just asked me if there were a few different things that I could do for her. So I um, I have been working on that and she, she wanted some different sort of flesh, not, not flesh colours, but light browns to darker browns and also some coral and turquoise colourways and dark green and dark purple. So I've been working on the different browns and things. Here's some um, just mini skeins when I was just trying things out. Obviously the orange went a bit crazy there, but there's some. But I have the actual skeins dyed up and they're hanging just here. But I won't show them to you uh, now. I might show a photo of them when I have them all ready and they're dry and everything. But that's what I've been spending a lot of time on. But when I was doing this, I had some leftover dye in the dye pot, so I thought I'll, I'll just dye some other skeins just for the shop. And I did a similar thing to what I did last week. I took a superwash um, sock yarn and um, the white gum wool fingering and the white gum wool DK weight and all in the same pot and I dyed them exactly the same way and these are the three skates so this is the white gum wool fingering weight so it is a bluey 
blue purple gray sort of color base and I have squirted some um, sort of rusty color on there. Oh now the sun's doing a bit better so you can probably see the colors a bit better. So that's that one and it looks quite similar on the DK weight and these are not rescanned or anything so they're a bit messy but we might be able to imagine now after last week after the last episode that the superwash sock yarn will look quite different and that's what it looks like okay I had to restart the phone and hopefully now things will go a bit better anyway I was just showing this one and how it this is a superwash sock yarn it has a similar base of the blues and purples but when I put the rusty color on top like I sort of when I squirted that over because it was in a dye uh, stock it wasn't um, the dye powder it was just taken up much stronger and more um, local if that's a way to describe it and it just stands out a lot more than it does on the non superwash here it got much more blended in and obviously not as strong so yes yeah, dyed exactly the same way and this is the result so it'll be interesting to see what these ones look like when they're rescanned. If I have the time, I will I will rescan them and insert a photo of what they look like. If I don't do it here, I'll do it on Instagram. So have a look there. Um, okay, so just a short little recap. I went to this conference yesterday about um, growing super fine merino. And um, it was um, four growers of Superfine Merino, four growers to know what they need to do to get the message out there that um, Merino is just a great natural product and Superfine Merino is just a really great product. Um, that can be used instead of any other material really because it is not itchy like people um, think. So it's about getting the message out there that they're actually growing this really good product. So um, there were a lot of things that they were talked about that was way above you know anything that I have understanding for but um, there were quite a few pieces of information that I thought were really, really interesting. Um, they were talking about that wool is actually the best or a really good material to use if you have eczema because the skin will actually um, be allowed to breathe through the, the fibres and it's a natural fibre and there had been actually trials where people with a bad eczema had been using just thin layers of wool, merino, I'm not sure, and um, that the eczema improved. So that was one of the things they were talking about, that there needs to be a change in how people think, because a lot of people will probably say, well, if you have eczema, if you have skin problems, you should avoid wool because it will irritate you. And that's just not um, true. Of course, if you wear something really bulky um, and coarse uh, wool fibre, that might be the case. But if you use a fine merino um, and a thin layer, uh, it's, it's really good and it's nice and soft. I'm wearing a, a, a merino top at the moment. and. It's just really thin, very comfortable, they're not itchy at all. So they were talking about that, talking about how 
we need to, or how farmers need to get the message through about the story, story about the farms and what they're actually doing, how they're actually looking after their animals and looking after the environment on the farm and things like that. And it was, it's really interesting. The, um, oh, there was, um, Brenda McGain, I think her name is, from Australian Country Spinners. Um, she was there and gave a talk and she gave a talk about the um, Clarketon, I think it's Superfine Merino that they launched, I think it might, might be a couple of years ago now, a while ago now. I remember seeing it on like the Knit Girls podcast and some other, po I think maybe Stockinette Zombies podcast. They were giving samples when it was first launched and they tried it out. And um, it's just a really nice, really soft uh, yarn. And Brenda and two farmers here from Tasmania actually went to Vogue Knitting Live, I think it's called, in New York, um, a little while back, and um, had all these different um, colorways of this super fine merino knitting yarn uh, with them. And they launched it there in America. And I think they now sell it in Joann's. And maybe even at webs and that was a huge success and um, they were talking about that it is um, of course a wonderful product and they have they can share the story about where the wool comes from and everything like that and that's really appreciated and even though the price point for this super fine merino is much higher than what the average skein of yarn is at Joanne's or webs but that um, when people feel it and feel the quality and they can see the story behind it, um, they're happy to pay that money because it's just a quality product. So that was really interesting to hear um, Brenda talk about that. And there were lots of other uh, things that were really interesting, but um, I probably won't do them much, much justice talking about them because I can't retell the stories very well. <laughs> um, so I think that's what I have to talk about. Some knitting, some dyeing, and the conference that I went to. And um, I will do the cow drawings and I will um, get back to you with the winners. Okay, cow drawings have been done, an anniversary drawing. So, I am pretty sure I took a screenshot of the random number generator for the different ones that I did. I'll, I'll put them in on the screen somewhere when I let you know who the winners are. So, um, for the mini cow, we had 43 entries from 20 different people. I believe and the winner was number 21 which is yarn poetry Sarah and Sarah actually put in seven different um, projects which is great and the one that was post 21 that I drew was a pencil container I think it was crocheted and it's it looks really great and she had lots of great projects in there so congratulations Sarah you win this bag with some of my hand dyed minis in it. So Sarah, let me know your address and I'll um, get that in the post for you. Then we have the anniversary giveaway drawing and there were 35 people that um, told me about where they how long they've been watching the podcast for and where what they're normally doing when they're watching and first I drew the winner for the skein of um, a DK skein of hand dyed of their choice that I'll, I die off I'll die up um, for the winner and the winner was pink sticks for pose number 20 and pink sticks is um, Leanne. So congratulations Leanne. You um, 
get to choose um, a colorway, something that I've done before or something entirely new, come up with something fun and I'll dye up a 100 gram skein of DK White Superwash for you. So please, get, please be in contact with me and um, I'll um, make that happen. And then there's the second prize for the anniversary giveaway and that was um, the pattern for the Chelsea Beach shawl that Holly Dapp designed and she uh, donated to the podcast and the winner that I drew for that was post 23 which is Ange in the East which is Angela so um, Angela um, please let me know that you found out about this and I'll um, notify Holly and you'll get a pattern and the Shelsea Beach pattern is, is a really great pattern. I test needed for that and mum took the shawl so I don't have it to show you. Anyway, thank you to everyone who took the time to participate in the anniversary giveaway and also um, having fun with us in the mini cal. It was great and I'm working on my mini <laughs> project now which is, um, oh, what's the name? Moonraker shawl. Um, so I didn't finish in time but anyway I'm doing it and I'm using a mini which is really good and I, I've got a lot of great ideas of what I can do with some of the minis that I have oh talking about minis I actually I had um, sets of 10 mini skeins in my shop for a long time I had a few sets there and they've now sold out which makes me think that I am um, I need to die up some more and if anyone has any ideas um, or any opinions on, on sets of minis what numbers you think are good if it should be like all very different colorways or try to do it in like a set of pink or yellow or you know keep it in sort of same colors and um, yes how many if um, I know I've asked this before about superwash or um, wool and nylon blends um, but yes if, if you have any ideas about um, minis and what you find best um, please let me know if you have the time because I think I'll have to um, get on with dyeing some more very soon so that's it that's um, what I have to share with you today um, I have all my dyes here for the, the custom dye I'm doing and I just just need to dry a tiny bit more and then I'll be able to rescan them and take some photos and send off photos and see if they are okay or if I need to over dye any of them. Um, I've had a lot of fun um, receiving photos and samples and creating something um, quite specific for a customer it's it's been really good it's been fun so I'm going to go and enjoy this Sunday enjoying the wind and the sunshine it's still uh, morning here I uh, was up at 5 a.m. because my two-year-old decided that that was a good time to get up this morning of course she um, fell asleep for a nap quite early this morning again so that's um, why I am recording quite early in the day. Um, I do not have a new cow lined up. However, I have prices for a new cow. If you have watched before, you might remember that I was um, uh, I received some wool top um, from a viewer, and I have one of those um, for a price for a for a knit along or a spin along so if you have any ideas of what we should do next um, please let me know and I'll think of something for the next episode it's nice to always have have a cow going I think and I think we'll just we'll make them two months and then um, a lot of people will have time to join in I will some school not summer holidays, it's school holidays here now, they've just started and so we have two weeks without school. I am lucky enough that I won't um, 
have to work my normal schedule of three days a week. I will still do some work and of course I'll be doing my normal bookkeeping job from home. But um, I'll have my six-year-old, well, soon six-year-old home with me and my two-year-old most days. So um, we'll hopefully be able to come up with some fun things to do. We are going away for a little road trip down to the southern part of Tasmania and I might be able to uh, get some video and photos from down there and share that with you next time. So I won't keep you here watching and uh, I'd like to say thank you again to all of you for watching and participating and being a part of, of this podcast and our group. So I'll, I'll go and I'll see you next time. Take care everyone and um, until next time. Bye.